Well, greetings and salutations, test takers. This is the Series 7 Guru coming to you from my off-grid location uh, somewhere in northern Arizona with an explication request. Uh, the best free supplement to your paid study materials is my YouTube channel. If you don't have a Kaplan Q Bank, I highly recommend it as a paid supplement. It's the best out there. With my 15% discount code at checkout, you can get a 6566 uh, Q Bank for a little under $60. Uh, for that commercial, Kaplan allows me to give you a free look on Kaplan content. And, uh, you know, I'll help you with any questions as easy as Kaplan because you can send me the QID like this test taker did. And I can bring it up backstage. All right, let's get uh, busy explicating this uh, practice question. Uh, Patrice has an investment portfolio with the following characteristics. So per, uh, Patrice's portfolio had a return of 9%. Uh, the market did 12. Hmm, <clears throat> Interesting. You know, uh, so far, it looks like she may have underperformed, but we don't really know uh, based on, uh, you know, we need more information. Uh, standard deviation is 4%. Market deviation is 7 Portfolio beta is 0.65. Well, there we go. So Patrice's portfolio is less volatile than the market as a whole. So that means when the market goes up, she's going to underperform the market. Uh when it goes down, she's going to outperform the market, won't go down as much. So the expectation she should have is that she's not going to get uh, the market return. She, based on volatility, based on beta, should be able to capture 65% uh, of that. If she does better than that, that would be a positive alpha. Uh, the risk-free rate of return is 3%. So Patrice could have got 3% without risking her capital. So in other words, when we're looking at her 9%, we need to know that she could have got three without hazarding or risking her capital. So nine minus three is six. Uh, the market returned 12, but you didn't need to hazard your capital in the market to get three. 12 minus three is nine, right? So we're going to adjust that for the risk-free rate of return. All right, well, let's see what the question is. The question is, what is her portfolio's alpha? So we're trying to see if she has excess return over beta, positive alpha, or she has negative return you know, underperforms and has negative alpha. Alpha could be both. I think for test purposes, really, to be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen, you should just know alpha is excess over beta. You know, if you tell me that you uh, missed the mark on 65, 66, because you couldn't calculate alpha, I'm going to say, come on, maybe two or three math questions. I don't think you're going to see this. You're going to see current ratio, acid test, current yield, total return, uh, working capital, those are the other kind of mathematical things I would have down before I could uh, actually do this. Okay, that being said, though, you know, if we get a draw from hell and we don't want to guess B, we don't want to assign this universe and we uh, to the universe, and we're going to attack, this is how we're going to do it. Right? So as I said, uh, we need to take into account that the risk-free rate of return is 3%, and that's what you get for not hazarding your capital. So her portfolio's return, now we're just going to plug in our numbers, right? Her portfolio return was 9%. And again, she could have got nine of the nine. She could have got three without risking her capital. So that's going to be 6%. We're going to do that parentheses first. Order of operations, you do parentheses first. I'm sure somebody knows there's a, there's a memory aid for mathematical operations. I'll leave it to somebody to put it in the chat, uh, what it is. All right, now uh, minus, uh, now we got to do the other side of this equation. The beta is 0.65. Her portfolio is 0.65 as volatile as the market, right? The market is the S&P 500. So, you know, if you have an S&P 500 index fund, the beta would be one. All right, the market return was 12. We could have got three with a ha without hazarding our capital. So that means the market return was really nine, right? Because we can we factor in the idea that if we could have got three without risking our capital, now it could be the T-bills, could be T notes. It's whatever is given here. We're telling you, we're just stipulating that it's 3%. I, mean, I know so I have some real estate friends that use the treasury notes. Some people use T bills, whatever. Anyways, now we do that math and we get 5.85, the beta. So she should have the expectation based on beta and the market return that she would have got 5.85 just on the beta, the volatility risk and reward. And she got six. So she did indeed get positive alpha. So she has a positive alpha, and positive alpha means she did indeed outperform the market on a uh, outperform the market on a risk-adjusted basis, right? 
because we adjusted it for the risk. The risk adjusted basis was taking out that risk free rate of uh, 3%. So that is the answer to the question. A lot of work for one point. Uh, do I think you're going to have to actually calculate this? Uh, I think in most draws, it's all about probabilities. I think this is a very low probability on your exam. I think your time is better spent elsewhere. Uh, but oh, oh, well. Now, remember, you didn't need the deviation. That had nothing to do with answering the question. And they do that quite a bit in these exams where they give you information that's not necessary uh, to solve the question. All right. Well, I hope that was helpful. Remember, uh, inch by inch, your 6566 is a cinch. Yard by yard, your 6566 is hard. And I will see you in the next explication request.